Hello everybody, here we are today and we're going to be doing a review of JFresh's team standing projections for the upcoming 2023-24 NHL season. Now before we start, please make sure to subscribe if you're new to me or the channel. If not, no big deal. Now let's get into it. So basically JFresh, as a lot of you probably know, is on Twitter, does a lot of work with, you know, contract projections, free agency, stuff like that, but also as a computer model that, you know, has a lot of uh, vectors and values that basically will go through and say what a player is good at, what a player is bad at, all that stuff. And it works too with teams. So for this, he ended up having this released on how the standings could end up according to his computer model. Now, I'm going to say right away, he even said that there were some big shockers here. So I'm just going to put it up on the screen here, probably leave it here for the whole video. That way you can, you know, look at it while I'm talking and kind of give some takeaways from it. So for the you know, opening thing right away is the fact that the bottom looks pretty normal. You have San Jose, a team that probably will be there towards the bottom. You have Chicago, Philadelphia, and Montreal. Now, a few days ago for my Detroit video, I said Montreal and Philly should be bottom of their division, so that checks out. Chicago probably will be there. Arizona might be able to give them a run for their money. We'll see. And then the Anaheim Ducks, maybe they finish last in the Pacific, but it'll probably be Anaheim or San Jose that finishes in the bottom of that division. And then, jumping up the top, we have the division winners here, the Edmonton Oilers, Winnipeg Jets, Carolina Hurricanes, and Boston Bruins. Something doesn't seem right there. What is it? It's the Jets, in my opinion, winning this division. Now, a lot of things happen here for the model. I'm sure that, you know, goes in and looks at the roster and it does its own thing. And maybe it likes Connor Hillebuck and Nett. But it doesn't understand that it could see a flurry or that the Jets could see a flurry of moves during the season, including trades. Obviously, computers don't understand the emotion of all that. And, you know, Rick Bonus, how he's getting along with his players. As for the other ones, maybe the Oilers could win it. Obviously, they've got a lot of top-end talent there. Uh, Carolina, been one of the best teams in the league for a while now. And then the Boston Bruins coming off of a historic year. Not too crazy there. Now, it's going to go through the divisions, and I'll give my take, and basically that'll be it. So, for the Pacific Division, my biggest takeaway here is that the LA Kings, according to this projection, will fall. That's after making a big Pierre-Luc Dubois trade, going from third, I believe, in the division prior to this, uh, and then going to sixth, which would be a pretty big shock. They've made the playoffs back-to-back -back years, and of course they got knocked out in the first round, uh, but it would be interesting to see them kind of go backward instead of forward. Of course, they acquired PLD to hopefully get uh, everything right down the middle. And then Calgary, a team that I talked about towards the end of last season, really catching fire, ironically, and a club that could have a turnaround. Very well could. I know one thing is they weren't good at comebacks. Now they have a different coaching situation. Maybe they'll be able to a control leads like they did last year. I think they were able to control leads pretty well, but also get leads back if it's been taken away from them or just come back in general. So there's that. Vegas finishing second doesn't seem that surprising to me. Vancouver does give me that vibe where they could finish probably like fifth or sixth in the division. So, you know, nothing crazy there. As for the central, um, obviously we talked about the top and the bottom. I do see Nashville and St. Louis kind of battling it out for that sixth place spot. A lot of people are saying, well, the Blues have intentions to make moves. From what I saw last year, you know, it looks like they were making moves for the future. They might not be in a great spot to make the playoffs this year. And I think for them, they would probably be happy if they were able to finish fifth in the division this year. That's just my take. Now, with Nashville, if Soros gets hurt, they could be really bad. And I know that they did make some moves to get better, but Nashville doesn't really impress me all that much. Uh, Winnipeg, in my opinion, will not win the division. I don't think it's a crazy take there. I do see Dallas, Minnesota, and Colorado as being the 1-2-3 in the Central. Where that finishes, I don't know. Dallas was in control for most of the year because Colorado was ravaged by injuries. What do you know? The Avs turned it on late. Dallas kind of faltered at points, uh, like 15 games out or something like that, and ended up finishing second, and then Minnesota finished third. That seems to check out there where they should finish in the top half of their division. As for the Metro and the Atlantic, I think it's pretty fun here. Uh, Metro... I don't have a whole lot to take away here. Obviously, you have the Hurricanes and the Devils that are top two. Makes sense. Columbus finishing seventh in the division. I also kind of get that. Uh, you know, again, they are better, but kind of like I said in my video about the Red Wings the other day, their division's good. They could theoretically be an actual uh, better team, 
but maybe not get the results they're wanting because their division is good. Now, the biggest thing I will say is if the Islanders finished above the Rangers, I think it'd be a little bit shocking considering I think the Rangers are a better team, or at least they have more offensive capabilities. And if Shesterkin's locked in, you know, there is no hope for anybody. If Sorokin gets hurt, the Islanders, they could be pretty bad, I believe. As for the Capitals and the Penguins, I'm going to say that the Penguins finish above the Capitals at the end of the regular season. they kind of aggressive in free agency in the offseason. I don't necessarily think that every move was a good one, but I look at the Capitals, and a lot of these guys want out. Again, the model doesn't understand that some of these guys think Kuznetsov uh, wants out and is demanding a trade or something like that. It was one of their players that had been there a minute. So that could be a situation where we see those two battle it out for the middle, bottom-ish part of the division. Nothing too crazy in the Metro. I don't think there's a lot to take away there. But the Atlantic, I think, is there's plenty to take away because this is such a deep division. Montreal finishing last, no big deal. But you look at 1-7, through seven, they see Boston repeating and having that success from last year. Obviously, a significant drop-off, but to be expected. Florida finishing second would be shocking to me. Um, I do think Toronto is the better team. Now, they've got something going on with their gold thing situation with Simsonov, so I don't exactly know what's going to go on in their in between the creases, but for them, I would say that they should finish better than Florida. Uh, the big things here are kind of in the middle bottom part, where I think is shocking. Buffalo, they have them finishing 7th in this division after a really impressive season last year. If they finish 7th, that probably isn't the end-all be-all, considering that this division is so deep. I think it just would be frustrating because you would feel like you're so far away from the playoffs. Again, if you're not top 3 in your division, you got to go to the wild card. But if this was to be the case, then the Senators, the Lightning, and the Red Wings would finish above them. Uh, Ottawa, again, similar situation. They were a little bit more aggressive in free agency. I don't think Buffalo did a whole lot, but they went out and got Corpusolo. They did trade away to Brinkett, but if they finish sixth in this division, I do think they'd be frustrated after trying to find a goaltender for the future. Seems like something that they have been playing around with for a while. And as for the Lightning of Detroit, I think that's the most fun takeaway here. The Bolts slip out of the top three and are projected to finish fifth here in the Atlantic. Tampa Bay, again, a team that continuously just keeps losing key guys, and they are a club that gets a little bit older each year. Vasilevsky, maybe he doesn't do as well as previous seasons. I know there's been, you know, some talk about how the Stanley Cup final went and then how some things worked out, but, you know, that is something to keep an eye on there if they regress. Red Wings fans, in my opinion, would be ecstatic if they finished fourth in the division above Tampa Bay. I don't exactly know how realistic that is. Again, I kind of said in my latest video about Detroit, I do see them being a team that could finish anywhere from fourth to seventh, but I'm not exactly sure where that would be. Tampa Bay is not as good as previous years, but if they finish with 93 points, that to me would signify that something else needs to happen for them. And I know they've been trading away a lot of their future picks for players that maybe aren't worth what the picks are. But I still do see this Tampa Bay team led by some key guys as being better than the Red Wings. We will see, though, overall, obviously, I think the biggest takeaway here that was shocking was the Jets finishing first. And, you know, again, I don't think there is too much from this list that just screamed egregious to me because it is so random and the computer does its own thing. But those are my reactions, or this is my reaction for Jay Fresh's standings. Uh, again, I did want to say, obviously, he even said himself there were some shockers here and that he doesn't necessarily agree with everything the model said. So don't get mad at me or him because, obviously, the model does what the model does. What are your thoughts, though? How do you think these divisions will pan out? I'd love to hear your comments down below in the comment section. Also, please make sure to like this video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you're new. Everybody, stay safe. Have a great night. And you will have hockey all right. Goodbye, Brigadiers and Brigadettes. This is your captain signing off. Have a great night.